Good morning. One piece of housekeeping information before I get started, please put your phones on Do Not Disturb if you haven't already. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Dr. Leah Logio. I serve as the Vice Dean for Medical Education here at Case Western Reserve University School of Medicine. Uh, I welcome you all to this wonderful event and congratulations to every single one of you on this very important milestone moment. It is the dawn of your career in medicine. To the parents, partners, friends, and families, welcome and thank you. Thank you for your tremendous support of your students through the 27 months of training to get them to this point. We know it hasn't been easy, but it's well worth it. Case Western Reserve University School of Medicine prides itself on its graduates with so many alums going on to do important things, and we have the same expectation of these graduates sitting here today. Medicine is not a job, it is a profession. And the word profession comes from the Latin root professionem, which means a promise. As your degree is conferred today, you promise to be up to the challenges within the practice of medicine. You promise to care for each and every patient to the best of your ability. You promise to address health disparities, to care for the uncared for, to connect with your patients in small and large ways that will make a difference in their suffering of illness and disease. You promise to actively seek to deeply understand the values, preferences, and beliefs of your patients in order to provide them your personalized attention. And we are confident that you are up to these promises. My final encouragement to all of you is this, for you to have strong qi, C-H-I. In traditional Chinese medicine, qi is the life force or energy. It's actually the ultimate measure of vitality. And as you begin your journey, I wish you strong qi, strong energy, but also using the letters from the word qi, C-H-I, I encourage you to be fueled by C, curiosity, ask questions, and learn deeply. H, humility, to recognize what you don't know and how you can lean on others. And I, integrity, to be honorable in all your efforts as a clinician. Again, congratulations, one and all. It is now my honor to introduce Jensen Lewis, who is our Physician Assistant Interim Program Director, to get us started. Thanks. Thanks, Dr. Logio. Good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing this morning? Wet. <laughs> Well, I want to welcome everyone joining us today in person and virtually to celebrate the achievements of the Case Western Reserve University PA class of 2022. Since you all arrived on multiple occasions, I've said to my family and colleagues that your class was exceptional. It is my great honor to stand before you today and watch you cross this stage as we all watch you transition from physician assistant student to physician assistant. I am proud to have been the director of your didactic education, as well as the interim program director as you finished your education here at CWRU. You have exceeded all expectations and demonstrated what it means to be a Case Western Reserve University PA. Your accomplishments in the classroom, the community, and the clinical world are astounding. I am speaking on behalf of your family, loved ones, faculty, and staff when I say that we are unbelievably proud of you. The CWRU PA program strives to improve access to healthcare through the education and development of compassionate, highly competent physician assistants 
who are prepared to provide quality, patient-centered care in a collaborative environment. I can say wholeheartedly that the students of the class of 2022 have helped us achieve that mission. It is now my pleasure to introduce to you Jessica Gogan, the Case Western Reserve University PA Program Class of 2022, for remarks to the class. Hello. It is my pleasure to introduce myself to the families and loved ones at the Case Western Reserve University PA program class of 2022's graduation day. My name is Jessica Gogan. I have had the incredible honor over these last two years to serve as class president for our cohort. I welcome you all today to celebrate the accomplishments of this year's graduates. Every one of you in this room, those who were unable to make it here today, and the ones we have lost have made an incredible impact on the graduates. We would not be in this room and come this far without your continuous support and encouragement. Thank you for everything you do. To, uh, <laughs> to our faculty, I do not know if one speech is enough to express the gratitude for our time together throughout this program. So I would just like to say thank you for this ceremony. Thank you for guiding us through these past two years. Thank you for being the role models for the providers we will soon become. And thank you for being the unwavering support system we didn't know we needed. We began this journey having navigated through a global pandemic on the tireless efforts and support that you have given us. We hope that we have made an impact on your lives as we will not soon forget all that you have done for us. My fellow graduates and friends, it is an honor to speak to all of you like this one last time. After the fast and challenging pace of the program, it is um, my honor to have served as your president, and I thank you for allowing me to be in this position. Today is a day for decompressing from the last 27 months together. I hope we welcome the heartfelt relief to encompass us graduates right now as we turn momentarily to acknowledge all that led us to this point. Many people say that today is the day we start our journeys. We're graduating and finally about to enter our profession. I, however, disagree as the journey to where we are began a long time ago. Growing up, you're always trying to figure out where you fit in in the world, but many people have no idea what they want to do in life outside of being an astronaut, of course. And honestly, that's never too late. Just last year, the first PA went to space. Um, but, but truly, finding your place in this world is a very personal thing. Everyone will tell you a different story, and choosing what you want to do in life is often multifaceted, much more than we ever could anticipate. There is no formula, no set of steps to get you there, no one Google search to answer all of your questions. While the time deciding if medicine was right for your future may have come over the course of weeks, months, years, or even seconds of inspiration that changed your life, we cannot deny, deny that it was not made lightly. Medicine is challenging. Medicine can be slow to evolve. Medicine is physically and emotionally demanding. But each path and gradual step in our journey continually upheld the notion that medicine was right. Each one of us went through numerous years of undergraduate education. This may be different for each person in this room, but college supplies a valuable sense of structure. Even when you're stressed, you can take solace in the knowledge you were aiming towards a greater goal. Eventually, this greater goal was getting into PA school. Years of our lives spent working in the medical setting, volunteering for local organizations, shadowing practitioners, or any unique experience you may have. Next comes the application process. I could go on for hours about the grueling process that is applying to PA school. The essays, the money, the stress, the travel, but nonetheless, all of that sacrifice and dedication led to your seat in May 2020 as a brand new shiny Case Western Reserve PA student. As I believe most of us would feel, finding our place in this program was different than we ever could have imagined. Building friendships over one inch virtual images was never something that crossed our minds prior to 2020, but we overcame it. Over the course of the program, we have cried, we have laughed, lost countless hours of sleep, cried some more. We have shared mutual tired eyes on the morning of our third exam of the week. Um, faculty have said the program was like drinking water from a fire hydrant. And although times were tough, through the collective efforts and support found in one another, that fire hydrant stream didn't seem so bad. Clinical year was a time of new challenges. We thrived in a world of uncertainty as we transitioned each month to a new location. We were faced with working exhausting hours while studying for the upcoming exam. We explored fields of medicine we never would have imagined ourselves being in. We discovered countless opportunities, all while paving the way for our place in this profession. At the time, these moments may seem insignificant, 
yet each shaped us into the well-rounded individuals we are here today. I draw upon the wisdom of Maya Angelou stating, the horizon leans forward, offering you space to place new steps of change. Today is the day we graduate. We take new steps into our careers as physician assistants. In this career, we will fail forward, but no matter where we end up, we can always reflect on the growth from where we began. In the process of finding our place in this ever-changing world, we have learned to be resilient and relentlessly curious. We didn't always have things figured out as students, and trust me, we will not always have them figured out as graduates. But throughout the life cycle of learning and experiences, we have welcomed the uncertainty and can continue forward as the problem solvers our world needs. While not the start of our journey, today marks the arrival of our future. We will soon become the inspiration for the future generations of aspiring PA students who will watch us enter into medicine with perseverance and compassion. In this meaningful journey forward, I ask that we continue to grant ourselves grace, go confidently into the unknown, expand our curiosity, and be empowered to become everything we've imagined. I stand here before you, looking back on the 27 months we've grown together, and as the path we have been traveling splits into 31 unique roads, I will miss you all. We have gained a new family amongst one another. To reach this point in our lives where we have the opportunity to walk across the stage is such an accomplishment. I do not think I could have done it without you all. I am so thankful to have met each one of you. I am so proud of you. Continue to be the extraordinary and ambitious people you are as you find your place in the world once again. Thank you and happy graduation, everyone. Hi there, good morning. I'm Sarah Kraus. I am faculty with the PA program. Um, and as I probably, one of the first things I said to you graduates, I work with the, mainly with the first year students um, <laughs> as um, the academic coordinator. So um, it's nice to see everyone this morning. Um, and I have the privilege of introducing our guest speaker, um, Dr. Charles Maudlin. Um, so you know, in the context, to provide a little context to um, Dr. Maudlin's um, address to you all. Um, as Jess kind of hinted at, your next step is the most challenging because you have to make the most of what you worked so hard to earn. Um, you can't let it go. And as you graduate, you're going to start to feel a little unmoored, unanchored, um, and doubtlessly, um, as you find your way to becoming a professional, um, you're going to, to be seeking out mentors, seeking out people who can um, help you find your way back. This is the nature of our profession. Um, we, we work in the unknown, and we have to lean on each other. Um, and, and I've said this before, um, it's something I feel very strongly, you all have to find mentors. Um, you can find mentors and peers, and you can find mentors um, um, in the physicians you work with, the nurses you work with, anyone you, you search out. Um, and so we've invited Dr. Maudlin here um, to help launch you into this journey into the unknown. Um, and um, as a mentor, as somebody um, who has made his own way um, and, and provided and made a lot of groundwork for himself as a professional and for um, people like him and, and our community. Um, and um, so Dr. Maudlin, he serves as the medical director of equity, inclusion, and diversity at Metro Health. And his key role there is the development of health equity clinical programs. Um, and he, he really serves and strives and has made great progress in strengthening an inclusive and diverse culture at Metro Health and at the Cleveland Clinic. He was at the Cleveland Clinic for 27 years um, as a member of the surgical staff. He worked um, as a kidney transplant surgeon and in urology. And um, he is quite well known and well respected in that community. In fact, um, Last night, I told the people I was working with in my shift I was going to introduce Dr. Maudlin, and every, there were oohs and ahs. Um, so he is well recognized and well respected. Um, he founded the Cleveland Clinic's um, Minority Men's Health Center, and um, as you all know, he the the um, Minority Men's Health Fair at the Cleveland Clinic. And at Metro Health, he is the founder and, and the director of that fair, which some of you have served on, um, and we are happy to participate in as, as volunteers for that. Um, he is, he graduated from Northwestern University, the Northwestern University Feinberg School of Medicine. Um, he has a lot of training 
Um, <laughs> another little anecdote, my husband, I was telling him about Dr. Maudlin this morning. He goes, he went to a lot of school. Um, <laughs> He completed a six-year residency in neurologic surgery at New York University, a three-year fellowship in kidney transplantation and renovascular surgery at the Cleveland Clinic. Um, he's a noted leader um, in, in addressing health disparities across the, na the nation and in Ohio. Um, he has quite a few accolades and honors and awards. Um, notably, Governor Mike DeWine appointed him um, in March of 2020 to serve on the governor's minority COVID-19 strike force. He was the chair of the Education, Communications, and Outreach Subcommittee. Um, he was also the first African-American staff urologist in the history of the Cleveland Clinic, and the first and only ever black transplant surgeon in the history of the Cleveland Clinic. We are very happy to have him here. Um, he is somebody who is dedicated to paving the way for people, um, especially young people. He's published a book um, called It Isn't Difficult to Do It If You Know How to Do It, um, that provides advice on, on making a path for yourself in your career. Um, and we're very, very happy that he's here to, to launch you into your career. So if you all can join me in welcoming him. So I wanted to thank Sarah for that uh, wonderful introduction. I, I have to admit that I still need help navigating my way on a daily basis. So uh, um, I wanted to thank um, all of you at Case Western, um, Dr. Logio, Assistant Dean Anastasia, Roland C. Seymour, and all of you professors, instructors, um, leaders of this PA program. It's really my distinct um, honor to be here with you today. And I wanted to say, uh, standing here today actually reminds me of a speech that I um, recently had an opportunity to give. There, there was an elderly gentleman sitting probably back in the third row. Um, and right during my very important speech, I noticed this gentleman, he got up and, and walked right out in the middle of, of my remarks and kind of distracted me. I didn't really know why he, got, why he got up and left. He never returned, by the way. And I happened to be able to run into him a couple weeks later out, out uh, in the community. And I was curious. I went up to him and said, well, you know, I saw you left right in the middle of, of my speech. Um, you know, I'm kind of curious, why would you leave in the middle of my remarks? And he, he looked at me kind of sternly, and, and he said, well, I had to go out and, and get a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I didn't really understand. I said, well, well, why, if you knew you needed to get a haircut, wouldn't you get a haircut before I started, before the speech? And he looked me right in the eye, and he said, because I didn't need a haircut before you started speaking. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, with that said, I, I, hopefully I won't drone on for, um, for, for a long time, and hopefully none of you will have to go, up, go out and get a haircut, um, you know, while I'm speaking. But, but UPA should know by now that uh, when a surgeon says it's going to take him or her a certain amount of time to perform an operation, if they say it's going to take 15, 20 minutes, it's really going to take an hour or two, so uh, you should know that by now. But So there's a lot that I want to relate to you that I know I won't have time um, to get to everything. And, and, and so because of that, I want to get right down um, to business um, and say that um, today, because you faithfully uh, executed and fulfilled the requirements for this uh, PA program, um, at the end of the ceremony, this, this uh, prestigious university is going to bestow upon you the official degree of Masters of Science, Master of Science in Physician Assistant Studies uh, because of a job well done. And with that, you're going to assume your rightful position amongst our family of healers, healthcare providers. And, and, and believe me when I tell you this, we've actually been uh, excitingly waiting for all of you to join us because there's a, just a few things that we have for you to do um, to, to assist us. <laughs> So I'll just name some of the things we, we have in store for you. We, we need you to see lots of patients, with major, many with major complex problems, both in the office, on the wards, in the ICUs, the ORs, the ERs. We have many problems for you to sol help us solve. Chart notes to write, patients to call, pages to answer, patient consents to be obtained, patients to be educated, lab and x-rays for you to check meetings for you to plan, lead, and attend, insurance and other in seemingly endless forms for you to complete, 
deadlines to meet research, to conduct papers to write and publish, reports and presentations to give, and this is all in the first day, so. <laughs> and then you're gonna repeat it after that, the next day. So I know you can hardly wait to, to get started, and, and again, we, we, we've been waiting for you, um, I, I can tell you, so we're gonna put you to work. So we also encourage you um, to come actively engaged in some of our simple efforts and initiatives, uh, some of which um, involve improving access to care for all, eliminating health disparities, addressing the social determinants of health, um, helping solve poverty, homelessness, maternal fetal infant mortality, substance abuse, the mental health crisis, addressing um, health provider staffing shortages, um, practicing value versus volume medicine, adhering to both external and hospital regulatory and compliance policies, educating the workforce re regarding equity, inclusion, and diversity, and, and these are just some of the things and um, helping us improve health outcomes, the inpatient experience, uh, ju just to name a few things that we want you to get involved with. So you can see that you're entering this profession at a uh, time in history when there are many challenges to be met and problems to be solved and at a time in history when increasingly uh, healthcare providers are tasked to seeing an exponentially greater number of patients while being given less time to spend with each individual patient. But we believe in all of you and we know you're up to the uh, task uh, to, to step in, into this role because we know you've prepared and committed yourselves to now accept the many attendant challenges and responsibilities that will invariably come with putting on one of those white coats which you will put on today. Uh, but let me assure you, even though the work is going to be difficult, it's gonna be hard, it's gonna be long, that uh, you will also experience a lot of fulfillment in the work that you do because you will be enriching the lives of countless numbers of individuals whom depend and rely upon you. Uh, that, and that's not only your patients, but also your, the community in which you serve, as well as your coworkers, uh, all depend upon you. So reflecting back when I was in your shoes sitting, um, this is before many of you were born, back in 1987 at my medical school graduation, um, I kind of reflect and I, I know how you feel because I was sitting there proud of uh, my own accomplishments, but I was uh, nervous uh, and a, a bit fearful in many ways in terms of wondering what was going to um, be in store for me in the future. I was asking myself, you know, would I be able to live up to the responsibilities and challenges in, in meeting the needs of my patients and demands of my colleagues. So again, having been in your shoes, I know that many of you may be a little anxious in, in terms of what lies ahead of, uh, ahead of you. And, and for this very reason, I, I think my major charge and purpose of being here today is to be of some, at least some value to you students by focusing my, my remarks on providing you with some usable uh, operational, practical perspectives, insight, information, and knowledge that I've been able to acquire um, during my journey in becoming a surgeon uh, and during my several years of, of practicing medicine and surgery. Uh, information, wisdom, knowledge, guidance, advice that actually has helped me uh, navigating the rigors of practicing as a medical uh, profession, professional, knowledge and advice that I wish that I had had um, years ago, you know, even when I was sitting at my um, uh, medical school glad, uh, graduation, a lot of the lessons that I learned were not necessarily intuitive. A lot of the lessons that I learned, I, I learned the hard way. So I hope to be able to make some comments that will actually help you transition from being students to uh, uh, practicing healthcare uh, professionals. So first and foremost, I, I, I think you already know this, you have to accept the fact that as, as healthcare professionals as PAs, you must never stop learning and never stop trying to improve upon yourself and your performance. But recognize that none of us are imperfect, not even me, you know. <laughs> we, we, all of us fall short of, our, of the expectations that others have placed upon us and, and it's important that you not beat yourself up or beat others up who also uh, fall short of expectations that you've placed upon them. Uh, instead, you should learn from your shortcomings and learn from the shortcomings of others. That's very important. Next, I, I think um, it's very important that you become aware of some of the challenges that, will, that, you, that you will definitely be facing. Uh, I cited a few already, but there's more. And, and one uh, thing I'd like to highlight is that 
now working as healthcare professionals, uh, many of the challenges, and maybe you've been exposed to some of these, they're going to become that much more magnified and more complex than maybe what you have experienced thus far as a student. So one approach um, that I encourage uh, you to take um, to be able to fulfill uh, the expectations of you and, and, and have a successful uh, career is to emulate uh, the practices of, of the experienced chess master um, who prepares, thinks, ponders, and plans out several steps in advance, his or her next move, as well as their opponent's likely next move. So likewise, in your case, um, I encourage you to anticipate potential challenges that you might face, encounter uh, regarding your, the care of your patients, and in working with your colleagues. A anticipate what, what some of those challenges might be. But more importantly than actually just thinking about or, or anticipating what the challenges may be, try to anticipate and plot out in advance the myriad of ways in which you might approach, mitigate, or overcome those challenges. And, and you need to do this uh, so that you can continue to devote your time to providing the best in care to your patients and be of best value to your team, all the while taking into consideration of what your own health and wellness needs are. So to cut to the chase, um, one priority of you now, um, now and into the future, should be to become more facile also in learning the art of engaging in what is called crucial conversations and conflict resolution. Uh, that, that's very important. This, is, this actually takes time to master, um, takes a lot of time, study, and practice. It's not all, always easy to do in real time, but that's very important. Uh, there are many great books on the subject, uh, which I actually uh, recommend that you consult with regarding conflict, resolution, and crucial conversations. Um, you have to take all these steps uh, synchronously while taking steps also necessary to build upon and expand your resiliency. I know, I know all of you students are very, very resilient uh, having um, done this coursework during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, but you're going to the next level now and you have to become even more resilient um, to be able to overcome a lot of the challenges and the workload that you're gonna be facing now as uh, professionals. Um, so first of all, in order to become more resilient, more self-resilient, I think it's important that you sit back, self-reflect, and recognize what have been the reasons for your successes thus far. In, in addition to your own work ethic and study and, and, and dedication, uh, I think you should recognize uh, that there have been people in your lives who have facilitated uh, many of your successes, and many of these people are here today, and I'd like for you to give them an applause uh, uh, right now at this time. <clears throat> so I think that you should recognize also that these people are people that you can continue to resource and draw upon the inner strengths that they have that resides within them and that they have actually instilled uh, within you. Uh, because no matter your age, no matter how far along you get into your career, you're going to need to draw upon the strength and resources, uh, guidance, wisdom, inspiration, and resiliency uh, for others, especially during challenging and stressful times. I, I know this because I've been there uh, myself. Now, I want to tell you a quick story. Um, uh, and, and my role models were my parents, uh, Charles and Grace Monlin, but I want to tell you a quick story about my mother. Um, my mother, at the age of 40, with four small child, children at home, rowdy children, I was one of them, um, she made the decision to go back to college to become an um, elementary school teacher. She went up to Ball State University uh, Teachers College. I remember one evening she took me up to one of her night school classes, and there I was in the auditorium running up and down, you know, out of control. As the professor entered the room, she grabbed me by the arm, pulled me in, and the professor asked her, you know, can you introduce your, your guest? And I was really bashful and shy. And I remember vividly, as this just happened yesterday, my mother introduced me. She goes, this is my son. And one day, he is going to be going to college also. And at the age of six, it hit me that my parents had actually placed expectations upon me that I was going to be going to college. It wasn't an option. And then expectations that I would always continue to do uh, the best in school that I could, and that I would actually respect all of those whom I encountered. 
Now, now what does that have to do with anything? It, it, the, the key word is expectations. And the people in this room who have actually helped you get to where you are actually had set expectations for you um, to pursue whatever you were pursuing to the best of your abilities. And these are the same people who even today actually now expect you to give it your all, to do your best in the care of your patients, um, and to respect everybody, your coworkers, and, and everybody whom you encounter. So that, that's very important that we understand that people have placed expectations up, up, upon us and still do so. But now as PA uh, pr protect, pr practicing uh, physician assistant um, professionals, there are gonna be some other people actually who have great expectations, high expectations uh, for you. Uh, this university has high expect expectations for you. Um, the alumni of this university, your professors, and of course uh, your, your patients and future coworkers have high expect expectations for you. And the best way for you to live up to these expectations is for you to also continue to place high expectations upon yourself, realistic expectations upon yourself, and that includes expectations of yourself that you will continue to advance your medical education, to build upon your clinical, communication, teamwork, and leadership skill sets, very important. So very important and something that is overlooked, hardly ever discussed is that as practitioners, caregivers, healthcare providers, you need to place realistic expectations also upon your patients. And you need to do that, and, but by at the same time letting them know that you have their backs, uh, empowering them um, to take care uh, of their own health care as well, uh, to follow uh, prescribed treatment recommendations to the best of their abilities, understanding that in, in many situations there are many social determinants of health that make it difficult for patients to comply uh, with your treatment recommendations. And empower your patients, encourage them to ask questions of you and other health care providers. Above all, let them know that they have a right to seek second opinions. Um, but if they fall short, to your treatment recommendations, do not give up on them, don't write them off. Remain calm, encourage them, and recognize that you are a major source of strength and wisdom for them. Let them know that you believe in them and you care about them because their lives matter. And if you do these things, and the word is because if you do these things, you can make all the difference in the, in the world in empowering them become active partners in your care. Uh, and this will also help them develop trust within you, which is essential. So how do you do all these things? Uh, it, it's very important that you communicate very precisely, clearly, and explanatorily with your patients, and, and you have a communication style um, that, that is going to be explanatory with your patients, as well as your coworkers. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, I've actually repetitively used a, a certain word, because, and I've done that in intentionally. I don't know if you picked up on that or not. And, and I've done this intentionally because behavioral science communication research studies have shown that the word because is the most powerful word in the Eng English language. That kind of surprised me. I don't know if, you, if, you, if you're aware of that. And, and one of the reasons is that when you use the word because, it, it's explanatory and it actually connotes the fact that you respect the intelligence of the person that you're speaking with. Um, and, and it's very important that you incorporate the word because more often into your communications lexicon with your patients as well as, well as your coworkers. If you, when you're trying to tell a patient about what treatment regimen they should follow, use the word because in helping them explain why, for example, doctor, if you tell the patient, well, you need to go get checked for colorectal, you need to get a, a colonoscopy, or you need to get checked for prostate cancer, you need the word, use the word because, you need to, you need to take your blood pressure medicine be, so that it will help you avoid getting a stroke. Uh, this is very important. Uh, again, one of the most powerful words in the English language, because. And also remember, before you communicate with verbal or written, or before you communicate either whether it's verbal, verbally or written, please think and prepare and plan exactly uh, what you desire to communicate and, and the best way in which to do so. Remembering that 80% of what we communicate is influenced by our body language rather than 
our words. So also, to you PA students, remember the imperatives which I know you've learned about eliminating our implicit biases and keeping at top of mind the importance of cultural sensitivity and cultural competency when interacting with your patients and others. So now, learning to think ahead and anticipate challenges as a, as a key to succeeding in your careers includes the importance of preparing and anticipating what will be the needs of your patients as well as the needs of your coworkers. So when I was an intern at NYU, uh, the first rotation I, I went on was uh, two months on the vascular surgery service. It was very intense, um, every other night call for two months, working 140 hours a week. I became very um, sleep deprived and, and stressed and, and back then before the days of outpatient surgery. Uh, we routinely had 70 in-house patients, 25, 30 admissions and discharges a day. Um, it was overwhelming. There was only one other intern on the service who was um, helping me, the senior resident, chief uh, resident. The attending staff were very dis demanding, to say the least. Um, depression actually set in. I was frustrated. I was overwhelmed. I felt like quitting. I didn't know how to keep track of all those patients, admission, admissions, discharges, you know, going to the OR, OR getting screamed at by the surgeons, uh, getting paged nonstop. So what I did, I picked up my father to call upon his inner strength, but also I remember uh, consulting with and opening up with a, a second year anesthesia resident. His name was Eric Winter. I, I thank him to this day. He gave me uh, some of the most sage advice that I've ever received um, that actually has helped me navigate uh, my career um, and, and help me overcome a number of challenges. A lot, a lot of his, his advice wasn't necessarily intuitive, intuitive to me at the time, and, and it may sound, sound simple, but what he told me was at the end of each day, you've had a long, hard day, you've seen a lot of patients, at the end of each day, what you need to do is pause and think about what happened that day uh, with, with your patients and your coworkers, but also dedicate and spend some, some time thinking pondering um, what would be the needs of your patients the next day. Um, and if you do that, actually, you're going to understand that you're going to be able to navigate a lot of the workload that is going to be coming to you uh, on a daily basis. So take time to think what has happened uh, and actually try to anticipate what your patients are going to need from you the, the next day. So even though it's unlikely that you're going to be able that you're going to have to uh, manage 70 inpatients a day as, as PAs, you will be encountering a large number of patients on a daily basis uh, in the clinic, on the wards, um, in other areas of the hospital. But, and you're also going to be assigned a, a number of uh, a large number of attributable lives that, are, that you're responsible for, even when they're not in your presence. Uh, these patients are going to be relying upon you, trusting you uh, to follow up on their labs, x-rays, biopsy results, uh, return their calls, my chart messages uh, uh, promptly and professionally. So one way that you're going to meet these demands uh, is by developing and maturing your own best workflows and daily navigational processes while remaining adaptable. So the key word is you have to remain flexible and adaptable, uh, but you have to plan out how you're going to manage uh, your, your high patient volumes and, and workload. Uh, it's not necessarily as simple as it may, may seem. And one reason it's not so simple is because as PAs, you're also going to be interacting with a number of different, uh, depending on your work situation, a number of different physicians and, and, and surgeons, uh, all of whom have different practice uh, preferences. And uh, I can tell you firsthand, and a number of physicians and surgeons sometimes have personalities that may be very difficult to deal with. Um, I don't know if you've noticed that yet. No, nobody's ever criticized me of that, I can tell you that. And, and you can go ask any PAs who have worked with me, so uh, I won't give you their names, but, but uh, <clears throat> so w one thing I, I, I implore you to do is learn how to speak up, ask questions for clarifications, and also learn how to ask for help uh, and proactively ask for help. Uh, another thing is I, I encourage you to step up, lend a helping hand to others in need, even when others may not even understand or appreciate that they themselves need help. So understand that seeking guidance and advice of colleagues um, is not a sign of weakness. Uh, it's a sign of maturity. Um, one more quick story. When I was back at uh, NYU as an intern, I worked at Bellevue Hospital. Um, and one of our attendings, uh, I'll, I'll call him Dr. A, 
was, was, uh, had a very abrasive personality, uh, intimidating, hypercritical uh, um, teaching style. Um, but as we progressed through the residency, we understood, we understood that what he was trying to do was in, instill within each of us that he had expectations that each of us be very analytical and precise in, in how we uh, approached uh, uh, and, and treated our patients. And as we went through the residency, it got to the point where we had actually had internalized uh, a lot of his teachings and admonitions to where if we had a question about what we should do about a particular patient, we would ask ourselves and others, what would Dr. A do? And I'm certain that many of your professors, many on this day is here, uh, physicians, surgeons um, that, that you've worked with um, have also instilled within you uh, such inner quality controls that will serve to guide you, your ethical and medically sound principles by which you will practice. And, and so I encourage you to remember what these individuals have taught you. Also become the type of PA who's able to see problems as opportunities, not as problems, but as opportunities and, and ways in which you might uh, innovate and implement pathways to over, overcome uh, such problems. This may become in the form of uh, you identifying better ways to schedule and follow up with patients, better ways to educate your patients, improve the patient experience, collaborate with, with colleagues, identify uh, gaps in care, and, and, and many other ways um, in which you may be value added. Recognize that as PAs, you will often be the person also, and, and this is, I've, I've benefited from this, you may be the, the person also who's in the best position to share information regarding best practices uh, between different physicians and coworkers with whom you work. Uh, for example, uh, you, you could share with one physician or surgeon how you've seen another physician uh, or surgeon approach a certain patient care issue, and, and by doing that, you'll be able to um, um, help um, a magnitude of more uh, patients than you otherwise would be able to and you become more value added to your team. So in, in closing, um, and I know you've been ready for me to say that in closing, an essential tr attribute necessary for your successes as medical pra practitioners is for you to possess empathy. An essential attribute necessary is for you to possess empathy, and I know, all, I know that you do. Um, and the definition of empathy, and I quote, is the ability to understand, take the perspective of, and share the feelings and emotions of another person. But the ultimate key, even more important than, than empathy, is that you possess compassion for your patients and for the communities you serve and for the coworkers with whom you will work, compassion. And it's because compassion supersedes simply being empathetic. So, and I quote, the definition of compassion is, compassion is when those empathic feelings and thoughts include the desire to help others. So, so compassion goes beyond just um, having empathy or being empathetic. So quick summary, I, I, I hope um, that you've heard me and taken with me uh, some of what I've highlighted and espoused. Um, we, we've talked about the importance of self-reflection, drawing upon the resources of those individuals who have supported you as a way to fortify your self-resiliency, knowing that it's okay to ask for help, it's important. Uh, you need to pursue continuing medical education, learn how to engage in crucial conversations, conflict resolution. Um, Realistic, realistically, you need to try to seek to fulfill realistic expectations, and you need to place realist, realistic expectations on your patients and others. Uh, it's important that you anticipate the needs of your patients and teams. Be a purveyor of information, seek mentorship, become a mentor, practice the ethical and solid clinical principles others have instilled within you. Um, Focus on best ways in which to communicate with your patients and colleagues. Incorporate the word because whenever possible uh, so that your patients will understand why it is that they should follow your treatment uh, recommendations. And again, that's going to help build uh, trust that is necessary that they have for you. Um, so you also have to do all of this while respecting your own personal um, health and wellness needs as well. And when I was growing up, that wasn't ever talked about. So that, that's something very important. So with that in mind, I'd like to congratulate you, the class of 2022. Uh, PA's on a job well done. 
And again, one last thing, this, this reminds me of when I was um, graduating in 2011 uh, with my MBA degree. Uh, our commencement speaker was, um, her name was Vernice Fly Girl Armour. And they called her Fly Girl because she was the first, she's a, and she's a former United States Marine Corps officer, but she was the first African, <clears throat> African American female naval aviator in the Marine Corps and she was the Marine Corps' first female combat aviator. She flew the Super Cobra attack helicopter in combat and, su and served two tours of combat duty, combat duty. In her commencement address to our class, she recounted that before any fighter pilot was allowed to engage the enemy in combat, they first had to receive a direct verbal order from their commanding officer in these words. You have permission to engage. And then she went on to conclude her commencement address by presenting my graduating class with a direct order using these words. You have permission to engage the world and to apply your education and training and earn credentials to go out and do good for the world. So now I likewise, now with emphasis as a senior official, representative of the medical profession who has a long-standing academic appointment and rank within this great Case Western Reserve University School of Medicine, that each of, you, that each of you new physicians I do now decree now have a permission to engage your patients, your communities and coworkers, and you have permission by the power granted to this great university by its professors and trustees and by the medical profession to do battle with the conditions which burden your patients. You have permission to take your rightful place as members of the medical profession, and you have permission to go out into the world and to become the leaders that we all know you have ready yourself to be. So now with that I say, you have permission to go out there and do it and kick ass and make a positive impact upon the lives of all of those people whom you touch. So thank you for having me and go out and do it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Modlin. That was uh, fantastic, and I hope everyone appreciates the words that he bestowed upon you. So without further ado, let's get these long white coats and diplomas. What do you think? <laughs> Anyone see that? <laughs> that was interesting. <laughs> Thanks, Tori. You're up first. <laughs> Tori Bondopadai. Kristen Byrne. Christine Chien. Chris Chutai. Yeah. 
Samson Dankert. Hauser Duncan. Krista Find. Tyler Fitzgerald. <laughs> Jacob Gary. Jessica Gogan. <laughs> Alex Goodwin. Michael Gray. Aaron Harvey. Nathan Hashigan. <laughs> Ann Husseino. Caroline Jeong. <laughs> Rebecca Canelli. Jennifer Lussenhop. <laughs> Laurel Mason Gerhard.
Amy Mataya. Jessica Michio. <laughs> Natasha Nand. Nancy Wynn. <laughs> Emily Nimi. Sean Nishwitz. <laughs> Lindsay Pike. Anna Riddle. <laughs> Christian Shaw. Sarah Tong. <laughs> Mia Weaver. Shirley Yi. <laughs> One final round of applause for the class of 2022. The class of 2022 is filled with number of accomplishments, and I'd like to highlight them very, very briefly here. Uh, so as I call your name, please stand for a quick round of applause, okay? We have one AAPA Past President Scholarship Award recipient, that's Laurel Mason Gerhard. Two recipients of the Paul Ambrose Scholars Program, Krista Find and Laurel Mason Gerhard. Yeah. 
The class of 2022 officers, Jessica Gogan, Alex Goodwin, Krista Find, and Michael Gray. Three student participants in the Interprofessional Scholars Collaboration in Teaching and Learning, Hauser Duncan, Aaron Harvey, and Shirley Yee. The recipient of the National Health Service Corps Scholarship, Jenny Lussenhop. OAPA student rep elect and student rep Tyler Fitzgerald. <laughs> Pi Alpha inductees Krista Find, Tyler Fitzgerald, Jessica Gogan, and Amy Mataya. And finally, student-run health clinic board members, Jenny Lussenhop, Mia Weaver, Jessica Gogan, Laurel Mason Gerhard, Jacob Gary, Sarah Tong, Lindsay Pike, Krista Find, Michael Gray, and Shirley Yee. Now graduates, please open to page five and find the oath of professionalism. And you can stand and face your friends and family. And we will read together. I pledge to, perf I pledge to perform the following duties with honesty and dedication I will hold as my primary responsibility the health, safety, welfare, and dignity of all human beings. I will uphold the tenets of patient autonomy, beneficence, non-malfeasance, and justice. I will recognize and promote the value of diversity, and I will treat equally all persons who seek my care. I will hold in confidence the information shared in the course of practicing medicine. I will assess my personal capabilities and limitations, striving always to improve my medical practice. I will seek to expand my knowledge and skills, keeping abreast of advances in medicine. I will work with other members of the healthcare team to provide compassionate and effective care of patients. I will use my knowledge and experience to contribute to an improved community. I will respect my professional relationship with my physician. I will share and expand knowledge within the profession. These duties are pledged with sincerity and on my honor. You may turn around. And now to welcome you to the profession, Professor Jensen Lewis. Class of 2022, first off, I want to offer you congratulations. I would also like to extend the congratulations to your family, friends, loved ones, and anyone else who supported you on this tough but amazing journey. I want to present you with some important dates along your journey to becoming PAs. September 12th, 2019. September 26th, 2019. October 19th, 2019. November 14th, 2019, December 12th, 2019. Anyone know what those dates were? Those were the dates of the in-person interviews at the Case Western Reserve University PA program. Each of you interviewed at one of those dates. March 10th, 2020, President Snyder and Provost Vinson informed the faculty, staff, and students that instruction will move to being 100% remote for the foreseeable future due to the COVID-19 pandemic. March 30th, 2020. April 6th, 2020. The PA program held incoming student webinars to inform you all, the class of 2022, that the summer semester for you will be fully remote. 
I want to pause right there. I personally cannot imagine what could have been going through your heads at that time. You had worked so hard to get to PA school, and then we tell you we're going to do this via Zoom. But you did not waver. The resilience and grit you showed was astounding. These characteristics will pay off immensely as you take on your new role, a physician assistant. May 18th, 2020, remote orientation begins. Some of you in Cleveland, some of you elsewhere. May 26th, 2020, your first semester begins completely remote, including anatomy lab. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> August 24th, 2020, fall semester begins. We are now in hybrid instruction mode. Some classes in person, some remote. This is probably the first time you all truly meet each other in person. You get the picture of where I'm going with this, but August 21st, 2022, today, the day you graduate from Case Western Reserve University as physician assistants. Having known all of you for almost three years, I am now excited to call you colleagues. I can't wait till you can just say Jensen instead of <laughs> Professor Lewis. Your PA education will be vastly different than any class before you and hopefully any class that comes after you. And that is what makes you so special. You took our rigorous curriculum head on. You worked hard. You never once complained. You were on the front lines of the COVID-19 vaccine rollout. Class of 2022, you are all rock stars. I think. <laughs> Collectively, you will hold the health of millions of patients over the course of your careers. Think about that. The impact you will have on patients, patient care, and the healthcare system is enormous. I hope you really take the time to reflect on all you've accomplished and where you're headed. Becoming a physician assistant is a privilege. It is a role that comes with significant responsibility. Do not take that lightly. I hope you all continue to ask the why of medicine. I hope you all continue in the advancement of your profession, your knowledge, and your education for others. Dr. Eugene Stead, the father of our profession, stated the following, each day I get up and smile because today will bring a surprise, and over my career in life, most surprises have been pleasant. As you step into your new role, look every day for the surprises that will come. They will be there. Look every day for the best part. It will be there. Remain thirsty for the opportunities to serve. Remain patient-focused. Strive to contribute to your community. Always, and I mean always, seek lifelong learning opportunities. Maintain grit and resilience. Be prepared for the many amazing opportunities that are only just beginning. From the bottom of my heart, I will miss you all. Congratulations on everything you have accomplished. You have made Case Western Reserve University and the Cleveland community a better place. Welcome to the PA profession. <laughs>